Okay. Body cam video reveals chaotic scene of deputy fatally shooting Sonia Massey, who called 911 for help. So, obviously, she called the cops. She thought someone was... It was an intruder, didn't she? She thought it was an intruder? Uh, yes. She called the police. They come there. Somebody was out in her yard or something. Yes. Um, they, she, they come there. They approach her. They interview her. She's sitting down on the couch. She's answering the questions. They ask for her ID and such. Um, Which is kind of weird that... When they have they, to, I, don't, I don't mind that too much because you identify they're everybody. They're taking down notes. Yeah, you, you identify everyone. Make sure everybody is verified who they are. So that's whatever. Uh, well, the strange part was when the officers went out and into the yard to check, there was a S, uh, SUV, a black SUV out in her driveway, and she said it did not belong to her, and the window was knocked out of it. Might have been some situation where someone was on the run or something and just pulled in her yard, got out of the car, and just ran. Maybe. Uh, you don't have to show the video, but do you have the clip of her not having the pot in her hand? I can get that. Um, she then, she's answering the questions. She goes into the kitchen because she has a boiling pot of water on the stove. Uh, the cop, she, she's removing the pot off the stove. She removed the pot off the stove because it started, uh, she's saying, that, uh, they were like, we don't want no fire in here or something of that effect. And she was like, yeah, she went up to, I guess, turn off the, the water that was boiling. And I guess she started saying uh, questions or explicit words. She said, um, well, one of, one of, profanity in, in the name of, I rebuke you I in, the rebuke you of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. But it was profanity attached to it like that dude. The auto- I'm sorry, go ahead. No, they asked her to remove, to remove the pot. They brought uh, that to her attention. Yes, the officer asked her to remove the pot because he said we don't need a fire. Yeah, so the, the point of that is you asked her to do it. She does it, and then you find a reason to see her as a threat. Vice Sorry. President. Well, you know, he said that when she started review, he said that wasn't the first time that she rebuked him. I think he said she had rebuked him earlier in the conversation. Maybe so. So he, you know, going to come up with this. He feared for his life. He yeah. did this because he didn't want to have hot water uh, thrown on his face. That's what he said. Hold on. Um... I can't find a clear video, uh, Honorable. I know people got zoomed in versions on Twitter. I'm going to be honest, I don't want to have to load that up. But yeah, you can see here, she didn't have the pot in her hand before the shooting. She already removed it. And the unfortunate part, it was after she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Well, you know what I said. He's a demon. He's a demon. You know, it's funny, we're watching a show right now called Evil, and these people will commit these crimes. This is, matter of fact, the episode we just watched in season two where the officer killed an innocent black woman in a traffic stop, and his reason for doing it was saying that something of supernatural came up. Yeah. And a demon came in place. That's why he thought he saw a gun and shot it. Um, oh, what up, ASAP? I honestly thought she was trying to have a friendly banter with the second officer. Didn't hit her explicit language. Finally caught alive. What's up? What's up? It's nothing wrong with explicit language. They just found a reason. So they shot her. You know what? They, you know what's even worse than that? After mm. he shot her, after the shooting, he the, didn't try to uh, revive her. her. And also, he went. He went outside. He said, "That's a crazy bitch." After yeah. he shot her, <laughs> he didn't feel anything. There was nothing. No empathy. He was completely felt justified in shooting this woman for no reason. Um, it was a demon. Unfortunately, we're not surprised at this anymore. I well, mean, that and then you know they they so this could go back. You know how that that black uh, U.S. Uh, Army dude got shot by police officers. He brought a gun to the he door. He brought yeah. a gun to the door. Yeah. So in this instance, I'm a back. I'm a backpedal and go. <laughs> At this state, she probably should have had a gun on her almost. Not, not she, not she should have had a gun on her. But at this state, there's just nothing you can do. There's nothing you do. I mean, if you tell me to go turn off a pot of water because you don't want to have a fire. a fire, and then I get up and I say, "I rebuke you in the name of Jesus," how do you know she's talking about you? She could be talking to whomever she thought was out there, 
or anybody trying to, you know, cast fear on her, she's saying, well, she I talking to him. you. And the thing about it is, and now I don't want to stand this too long because people might think you're just making um, too much of not too much of it. Maybe she felt a damn demon in the room. Yeah. But yeah. Go ahead. From the mental health angle, YouTube rumor screeds are saying his wife uh, works at a hospital where Sonya allegedly was. So familiarity breeds contempt with demons, if true. It brings familiarity as well. It brings her father was interviewed and uh, said the same thing about the rebuking the cop. Thanks. The amount of black men trying to justify this to Tariq was cringe this week. Soulless entities don't have no spirit, nor emotions, or empathy. Honestly, she should never welcome the first officer into her home. Did she ask for her Bible? Yes, yeah, she did ask for the Bible. You yeah, see? Maybe she felt something in that room. I also want to ask this question. We all we complain about the cops, justifiably. It seems like nothing you do will help not make these people react this way. I think we need to take things back to the old days. Oh, policing your community, policing your own community. Just simply having your neighbor's number. You want a white neighbor to have your number? The white neighbor. If you would, this is well, this is different. We're kind of spread out. Not all of us live in a, a neighborhood that's uh, primarily black. Well, get the black ones. Just get their numbers, and when something happens, call them first and say, hey, look outside your house and see if you see someone. And this, 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 I'm not putting any blame on her, by the way. I'm not saying she should have done this. She did something wrong. I'm saying we need, maybe we need to do that first. Call, even though that didn't work out for the woman in um, Texas when her neighbor called the police because he thought something was happening, and they came and killed her. So I can imagine that neighbor feels guilt. Well, he didn't. That's what you're, well, that's what you're saying. If he would have called her himself, and checked up on her. Yeah. Then things might have turned out differently. So call, if we can, if you can, please call your neighbor first. Ask them to look out their door, their window, and check. Not just one. Call anybody that's near you. Neighbors were left, right, for, uh, forward, and behind. Just ask them, hey, look outside your, your door and tell me if you see someone out there or something. Community watch. Because at this point, you can't ask them to just come do a checkup. This is just a checkup, pretty much. This is a house call checkup, and they somehow you, it led to someone dying. The person who called you. True. So. <sighs> let me, uh, and I also want to bring up the political angle of this, because it's always unfortunate that it doesn't happen. It happens every year, but in particularly in election years, you always see these type of cases get put into here. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think the response to this shooting has been what you would expect what we saw in video. So we saw, the second we found out about the story, within a couple of weeks, we, saw, we got the video. Normally it's months. They hold it off as long as possible. Like well, it's almost like they knew, even though the man was arrested, I think he's been charged already. You would expect there to have been more... He's of, being held without bond. Well, yeah. You would expect to have, there to have been more of this. But it's almost like they can't go full throttle with the protesting because it really wouldn't benefit either party. Kamala well, didn't you say Black, Black pro- Lives Matter has not come out and endorsed no. Kamala? No, they have not. He, and now everybody want to... Now that the a political, Black political class, now they want to dump Black Lives Matter now that they ain't officially endorsed Kamala Harris. But Kamala is running as a prosecutor, cop, against a criminal and Donald Trump. So she can't go into the whole racist cop, the system is unfair type thing because she's running as a pr- prosecutor. That's the that's the angle they're going with. We stop crime. We imprison people who are criminals. We fix the country. So she can't really lean. But you also do, but you also don't stand for injustice either. But she can't lean into this story from a standpoint of going at the cops. She can't. She can lean into. She can lean into it as far as our job is to protect and serve. That's going to anger some of the cops because they're going to say, we have hundreds of thousands of interactions a day and we don't have these situations. You shouldn't make this the face of what happens when the cop... No, it shouldn't be the face, but it definitely needs to be addressed. It definitely does. Right? Uh, honestly, dude, we better do, as you're suggesting, die. Because uh, as Bobby Herman said, uh, man, this shit over and the election results is about to prove it. Oh, man. <laughs> well... 
we need to advocate for a different group of first responders as we prepare since so many black people have useless degrees and licenses <laughs> in social work. <laughs> Kimla called uh Kimla called the family. She already leaning into it. I don't mean leaning into it by bringing light to the situation. We saw what happened with George Floyd. It was different. I'm talking about leaning into this this country is racist. This system is racist. It's unfair to these. They can't do that because she's running as a cop. I don't think any of them have done that. No, Trump definitely not going to do it. If Trump no, did it, didn't do it. If, who are you talking about? Biden them definitely did it. He did not say this country is racist. No, no, no. I'm not saying that Biden went that far. I'm saying Biden was definitely leaning into the whole George Floyd protest and all that other stuff. Trying to flip everything, yeah. Uh, they shouldn't use police for every situation. There should be a department that handles domestic issues. I remember thus was brought up once after the George Floyd. Okay, hold on. Let me ask you a question. That people that investigate, do they still have weapons on them? If they're investigating a domestic situation? Are you saying if they have weapons on it, it's going to be the same result? Yeah, they're still a cop. Uh, she won her last position using Miss African American Woman. This is what she does. <laughs> All right, a deputy who killed Sonia uh, Massey worked for six agencies in four years. I know he had like five DUIs yeah. on his record. Um, he just... We say this all the time when these stories happen. He had five DUIs, and then he had two complaints Yeah, from a, 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 either it was a husband and wife or a girlfriend and boyfriend, and they both were um, dismissed in that. Where, and where that district he was in said he left for good standing. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have any bad, besides the DUI and that interaction with as far as... They don't, they don't put nothing actually on their record. Yeah. Remember, remember, we were watching a video years ago. Uh, what did they call themselves? Those dudes that go around with cameras and flex on the cops to record them doing stops and stuff. Oh. Remember when he said, remember he went into the police station and asked for a complaint for, for, uh, for him and they wouldn't give it to him? He wanted to file a complaint, but they wouldn't even give him the... Uh, I know somebody know. They wouldn't, it, even, they wouldn't even give it to him to file the complaint. They said, tell us what it is and we'll write it. He was like, no, just give it to me. I'll write it. And he wouldn't give it to him. I think that's the norm in most police precincts. They don't actually give you the... Uh, Inability to file the complaint. How is the word not coming to my mind right now? Yeah, I forgot what it's called. It's the same dude that was a Debbie in the cars and <laughs> not talking to the police officers. One road they window down. Am um, I de am I being detained? Am I being detained? Yeah. Uh, do the workers who take people, kids, have weapons? Weapons aren't needed. Police are uh, monitor from a distance. Police can monitor from a distance. So you still bring the police on the scene? If you're gonna have this police just stay in the car, then all right. But even then, they still can get out and do something. If you have them around, it can go bad. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Is there a national uh, database for police records slash performance? There should be. So when uh, they go on another state to apply, all of this info shows up. I think everything is local. You have to look up every individual precinct where they work and look up their um, citations and stuff. I don't think it's something you can just have in a national bank. Maybe I'm wrong, though. I haven't, haven't checked. All right, let me show this video of, uh, I think this is, uh, what's her name? Tommy something? No national data. Uh, Tommy, uh, yeah, Tommy from Love and Hip Hop. She has some words to say. I want to know if y'all agree with her sentiment in this video about Sonya Massey. Why don't you go to the, I ain't marching by no shit like that. I don't want to go march with you motherfuckers. I don't want to go march with you motherfuckers and hold up no motherfucking signs and say the shit that we done said a million motherfucking years and a million motherfucking times. When niggas stop being pussy and niggas want to go killer cops, call me when y'all make y'all rounds for that. When y'all want to go killer cops, when y'all want to go hit up the killer cops, why don't you go Do you agree with that sentiment? Within this dangerous rhetoric. Uh, it's dangerous rhetoric. I remember years ago, I was watching Corey Holcomb. This had to be like 20... This is when this happened the same year as a shooting. Corey Holcomb, it was after the uh, the shooting that happened in Louisiana. Remember the guy who got shot in Louisiana? He was selling CDs or something? He got that shot at the gas store. store? Yeah. It could be a convenience store. And he was shot. Uh, after that situation happened, there was another shooting that had happened with a guy with his wife in a car. I think that was in Oklahoma. With a black dude who's in the car with his wife and the daughter. He got shot. He was, a, he was a teacher. I don't remember that one. Peace, Duke and Travis, and everybody in the chat. What up, brilliant? But, but, but uh, Corey Holcomb had went on his uh, podcast at that point, and he went on a rant, a passionate rant about 
getting back at these people for doing this stuff and how these people are going to keep doing stuff like this if they, if they think there's no repercussions. And not even a week later, the brother who went out and shot the police in Dallas, I think. Remember that story? The, the Pan-African dude, the light-skinned brother? Yes. He, went what, out, he, he shot five police officers. Didn't they bring him up like two weeks ago? Yeah. that's the That dude, had, he watched Corey Holcomb. Now, I'm not saying he did that off the words that Corey Holcomb used, but he definitely, you know, he was a viewer. He clearly saw that show, and he went out and act, reacted to it. I'm not saying Corey made him do it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you say stuff like this, some people react. People have been saying for years, why is, uh, what's the guy from Florida? Uh, the one who killed uh, um, Tavon Martin. Uh, what's his name? Zimmerman. George Zimmerman. Yeah. We've been saying for years why he's still alive. Because ain't nobody took him out yet. The one time somebody almost got him up out of here was another white person in a traffic, um, in a road raid incident. <laughs> he almost hit him in the head with the, he almost. He survived it. He almost got him out of here, but, you know, it wasn't meant to be. Go ahead. The New York grocery store was the last straw for me. Literally a week later, men were beef, beefing with each other from the area to promote a mixtape. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh man right, let me show this last video on Sonya everybody on TikTok is talking about the tragic unaliving of Sonia Massey by the police in Springfield, Illinois but did y'all know that her 4 year old cousin Terrell Miller was also unalived by police in March in fact the day after Sonia Massey's body cam footage came out it was announced that the police officer that shot and unalived Terrell Miller was not going to be facing any charges or discipline <laughs> I hate the fact that she's being um, <laughs> dramatic in how she's presenting this information, she's like being an actor. Like, she's acting like a, a, a news anchor or a news reporter. Come on, man. They are using Sonia Massey to cover up yeah. this announcement. That's Nick what she like. also did not attempt to do any first aid on the four-year-old that he had just unalived in the chest. And here's the thing. Lieutenant Nick Gock also knew Terrell's mother. He had been trying for years to hassle her. Here's what happened that night. On March 16th, Terrell's mother's highly intoxicated ex-boyfriend strong-armed his way into their home, telling her that if he couldn't have her, nobody could. He proceeded to spend hours essaying her at knife point. When the police were finally called, they spent 10 minutes outside of the door, not attempting to come in. Lieutenant Nick Grock was the superior on scene who made that call. When they finally broke down the door, they found Kiana on the floor in a puddle of her own blood. She started screaming, save my baby, save my baby. At that point, when she said that, he held the weapon to her, the woman bleeding out on the floor. Instead of neutralizing the man holding a knife, they let him walk across the room into the child's bedroom. When he appeared, he was holding four-year-old Terrell Miller in his arms with a knife against his throat and against his stomach. And with no regard for the child's safety, Nick Grock fired through Terrell, unaliving both he and the perpetrator in one bullet. The body cams will be released next week, probably Monday. When Kiana woke up in the hospital, she was informed that her son did not make it. She then had to recover from 27 incisions from that knife. There will be a protest in Macomb Monday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Sonia Massey's killer is in prison. Terrell's killer is not. And I'm going to be covering this story hard this week. So please say Terrell's name for Sonia's sake. Well, TikTok be on it, don't they? <laughs> you trying to yes, find that name, ain't you? You're trying to find that name, ain't you? I am. It's, it's, it's so many U channels. It's Audit the Audit. Audit, that's it. Okay, Audit. The, the uh, Constitutional uh, Crusaders. Constitutional, constitutional Audit, that's what it's called. Okay, uh, Society is in a Hunger Games scenario. The energy just might be awakening. We're going to get to that energy thing. Thank you.